Hi everyone, am I audible, visible? Yes. Am I audible, visible? Okay. So hi everyone, how are you doing? Welcome to Anagatme Need English. I'm your biology educator Ambika Sharma and today we are going to start a new chapter that is body fluid and circulation. So it's our marathon day today, right? So Friday is our marathon day today and that's what we are going to discuss, Bache. Yes, that's what we are going to discuss, right? Body fluid and circulation. So do tell me, how are you all? How's your preparation going on? What's up? Good evening. Very good evening to all of you. Very good evening to all of you. Okay. So see here is something amazing for all of you. Just have a look guys. So your unlock 20 is here. Right Bache. So you guys can see you can get 20% off on all the neat UG subscription. It is not just for the Avengers batch but any of the subscription you want. The plus, the iconic, right. Anything you want you will get the additional discount of 20%. So kindly do not waste the time. You know what you have to do. You just need to apply the coupon code. That's your Ambika 10. That's it. And you will get the additional discount of you. Just a minute, guys. Just. Okay, so you know, count off yes, 20%. And see, it is valid till uh, October 14 only. So join, right? So join the batches before that. Do it quickly. Join the batches before that, right, Bache? Okay, so let's go, let's go, let's start the chapter. So today's chapter is our yes, today's chapter is our body flood and circulation. So do you like this chapter? Please tell me. It is body, it is body fluid and circulation. It is body fluid and circulation. So tell me, do you like this chapter? Yes. Do you find it easy or difficult? Do you find it easy or difficult? See, we have already completed digestion and absorption, but now it is deleted. Okay. But we have completed breathing and exchange of gases. And the next chapter that we are going to start is body fluid and circulation. So soon we will finish your human physiology. And as I said, right, Bache, I will increase the session duration. Fine. I will increase the session duration and uh, we'll finish this right human physiology as ap so that we can start the plant physiology right but the thing that we uh, want is your support of course nothing else right so the the topic is body fluid and circulation so you know that when we talk about the humans right we are highly advanced organisms isn't it we are highly advanced organisms we belong to phylum chordata we belong to class mammalia isn't it we are the uh, vertebrates basically right the subphylum is the vertebrata so in our case all the systems are developed right we have the all the systems we have the digestive system reproductive system right the excretory system locomotory system same way we even have the circulatory system as well right what do we have students we even okay just a minute we even have what okay the circulatory system i don't know what is happening here just allow me a minute okay so we even guys i'm just trying to upload one video one uh, pdf but i don't know what's happening okay it's uploading the same one again and again done so in our case we are even having the circulatory system okay what do we have there we are even having the 
right even having the circulatory system and here in the circulatory system obviously we'll be talking about the heart we'll be talking about the blood vessels right the heart is there the blood vessels are there that's what we have to discuss so ultimately from this particular chapter that is body fluid and circulation right the topic on blood can come in your paper right the topic on blood clotting can come blood grouping ecg and even the working of heart these five are the most important topics of this particular chapter that is body fluid and circulation clear bache that is body fluid and circulation and please bache uh, I was about to upload one PDF, right? Basically, the NCRT SNPs. I don't know where is it. Just give me a minute. I'll upload that too, right? Because in every class, this is what we have to do. We have to, yes, Vache. We, yes. So we have to even cover the NCRT, right? Right? So that's why let me add that NCRT SNPs here. Okay, is that okay? Then the session will be in that smooth flow. Don't worry. Fine. Okay, so now it's fine. Done? Done. So these are the most important topics and uh, yes, you have to prepare it accordingly. Done, bache? You have to prepare it accordingly, right? So body fluid and circulation it is. So now we have the NCRT SNPs as well. So let's start the topic and let's start the discussion with the blood part first. Okay, let's start the discussion with the blood part first. So before starting it, you please tell me that when you compare, uh, when you see the other animals, Okay, so we have already completed animal kingdom. So when we talk about the another animals, so uh, when we compare another animals, right? So do you think that all of them are having same type of system? Let's make it interactive as well. Let's make the session interactive as well. So do you think that we all are having the same type of system? Tell me quickly. Do you think that we are having the same type of system? No. So can you just quote some examples here? Yes, Vachi. Can you just quote some examples here? Can you just tell me about the another organisms where you see, you know, uh, the different type of circulatory system? Anyone? Any example that you can give? So let's start, right? Let's let's start with the porifera here. Of course, in their case, you are not going to find the blood. In the case of poriferans, which is uh, the porifera, uh, the po it is the simplest phylum of the animal kingdom. Poriferans are the very simple organisms, right? So in the case of poriferans, we talk about the canal system. So when you discuss that canal system, you know that the blood will flow, flow from that canal system. The coanocytes are there in that canal system, right? The flagellated cells, they will maintain the water current and that water current will help in circulation. So ultimately circulation is important. Ultimately, circulation is important. It's just that in our body, we have a proper system. Okay, we have a proper system. Now see, one student is giving the example, the example of the open type of circulatory system and the closed type of circulatory system. So, Bacha, when we talk about the open circulatory system, right? Right, when we are talking about what? We are talking about the open circulatory system. We also discuss the heart here and we discuss the large blood vessels. Right, what are we going to discuss here? We'll be discussing the heart here and the large blood vessels. Okay, large blood vessels. So actually when it is the open circulatory system, you have seen the examples. You have seen the examples in orthropods. You know now orthropoda, the largest phylum of the animal kingdom. Right, you have seen the examples in the, right, you have seen the examples in the orthropods. So it is the largest phylum of the animal kingdom. Okay, so in their case also, you have seen that they are having a heart, large blood vessels are associated with it, right? Heart will pump the blood from these large blood vessels, blood will come out and it will be there in the body cavity, right? It will be there in the body cavity and other organs, they are just swimming in that blood, fine. They are bathing in that blood, fine, right? It's like that. Are you getting my point? It's like that. Okay, so here... When you are talking about the open circulatory system, each and every organ is not going to get the proper closed blood vessels that are going to pass blood to them. For an example, now, 
come to the closed circulatory system now when you are talking about the closed circulatory system yes heart is there and heart is required as well why because it is a pumping organ heart is required as well because why it is a pumping organ are you hearing my point it is a pumping organ so heart will pump the blood and here you will see the proper blood vessels right here you will see the proper blood vessels and each blood vessel will in, uh, innervate the individual organs there like for an example if i am talking about the kidney so there will be the renal artery which will carry the oxygenated blood to kidney right there will be the carotid artery which will carry the oxygenated blood to the brain so it's more like that right it's more like that so if you are moving right if you are moving even from the poriferens to the por uh, to the chordata even if you are moving from the poriferens to the chordata you will see right proper circulatory system is not there initially but still right the kind of arrangement is there which can circulate the fluid in the body so it is important right it is important is that clear is that clear so it is just the basic introduction here fine it is just the basic introduction here so now we have to start the chapter so i'll give you one scientist name as well uh, william harvey do you know do you know about him william harvey anyone yes do you know about william harvey anyone quick tell me Nandini, Vidisha, Subhashini and guys quickly hit the like button as well and share the video link with your friends, right? So now let's finish this chapter as well. So tell me who is William Harvey? Anyone in the class? Anyone in the class who is William Harvey? No cheating, right? And his name is given in NCRT, let me tell you. Even his name is given in NCRT. Yep, exactly. So he's the one who discovered the blood circulation, right? He's the one who discovered what? Who discovered the blood circulation, right? So it's important. It is given in human health and disease. Read about it. Clear, bache? Read about it. So see, in the basic introduction, they have given the same things, right? That all living cells have to be provided with the nutrients, oxygen, and other essential substances. Why do we need the circulatory system? Why? What is the need? Blood will get circulated. What that blood will do? Will carry the oxygen, right? And will bring back the waste as well so that it can get eliminated from the body. So for the proper distribution, right, that blood is required. Are you getting my point? Also, the waste or harmful substances produced, as I said, they have to be removed continuously for the healthy functioning of the body. That's why the circulation is required. Isn't it, Bache? So, different group of animals, as I said, have evolved different methods for this transport. So, simple organisms like sponges, sealantrates, they just circulate water. Okay, they just circulate water. Water from the surrounding will come to their body cavities and it will go out. Clear bache, clear bache, and complex organisms they use special fluids within their bodies to transport such material. So, when you talk about that special fluids, you are going to discuss about the blood and the lymph, right? What are we going to discuss, bache? We are going to talk about the blood and the lymph. So, that's what we need to discuss in detail. So, now let's start our actual topic that is Mr. Blood, okay? That is Mr. Blood. Fine. So, first of all, tell me what huh, study of blood is known as. Quick. The study of blood is known as. Yep. Tell me the study of blood. It is known as. Let's start with this part. The study of blood, it is known as. Obviously, it is the hematology. Right. It is the hematology. Clear, bache? So, now when you are talking about this blood, which is also known as river of life. Do you know that? Blood is also known as river of life. So, bache, we divide the blood. Okay. We divide it into two components. So, you will be discussing the plasma here. Right. And you will be discussing the formed elements here. Right. That's how you have to divide. 
so we will be discussing the plasma here and we will be discussing the formed elements here that's how we have to divide the blood right so these two are the components of the blood so when it comes to the plasma plasma is making yes 55 percent of the blood or the 45 percent of the blood this is a direct line from ncrt plasma is making 55 percent of the blood or 45 percent of the blood yes don't get confused everyone and everyone please quickly answer the question in the chat section Yes, I, I want to see that energy, right? Today, you are not here just to listen to me, right? Whatever I'm asking, please try to answer it here. Exactly. So, it is the 55%. So, plasma is 55% of the blood and formed element, they are making 45% of the blood. Isn't it? That's what blood is. And yes, even we need to discuss this topic in these two components, plasma and formed element, plasma and formed element. But before proceeding, can you tell me something about the color of the blood, about the pH of the blood? Yep, pH of the blood is important. And can you tell me something about the color of the blood as well? About the color, about the pH and can you tell me about the quantity of blood in our body? Yes, anyone here in the class? okay anyone here in the class yep anyone so see it's very simple color is red we know it very well and why that color is red because of the presence of the hemoglobin and where is that hemoglobin present rbc's and you are right the ph is 7.4 it's slightly alkaline and blood ph is maintained okay it is maintained so color is there ph is there and moreover if i talk about the volume right bache so it is near about five to six liters in male body okay and uh, four to five liters yep in female body okay so that much blood we all have clear that much blood we all have done bache done bache so now look at this slide just have a look look at this slide so this is a centrifuged sample of blood What's that? It is a centrifuged sample of blood, right? So, plasma 55%, formed element 45%, right? Plasma 55% and the formed element 45%. Now, when you look at this plasma, what do you have here in the plasma? Let's talk about that first, clear? Let's talk about that first, isn't it? So, but plasma by a weight, proteins are near about 7%. Majorly, it is the water. And there are certain other solutes as well. Now, let me explain this part. I hope you all like the chocolate milk. Right? I hope you all like the chocolate milk. Or you can say that Bon Vita. Hey na? You, all, you all like Bon Vita. So, basically, we are mixing a chocolate powder in the milk. Isn't it? What are we doing? We are mixing chocolate powder in the milk. So, that milk is the plasma here. That chocolate powder formed elements. So, when you are talking about the chocolate powder, formed elements, that are basically the blood cells and that milk is the plasma, okay, that milk is the plasma and but when you talk about this plasma, it is a straw colored, straw colored means kind of pale yellow it is, okay, straw colored means kind of pale yellow it is, this plasma, okay, and now here in this plasma, proteins, solutes and mainly water is present. So that's why even it is always advised to have, you know, good amount of water in your body. Ultimately, we need water, right? We need water. Major part of our body is nothing but it is the water. Is that clear? So proteins, water, other solutes, they are present here. Now let's talk about the proteins because, and yes, you should know about these proteins. I will tell you about them in detail. This part is important. So albumin is there, globulin is there, fibrinogen prothrombin these are the main proteins albulin uh, sorry albumin globulins are there fibrinogen is there prothrombin main proteins they are now when you are talking about the other solutes right ions nutrients waste product gases certain regulatory substances also in this plasma because it is like a medium in which cells are present right Arthi? it is like a medium in which cells are present so obviously in this plasma you will also see the hormones Clear, bache? You will also see the hormones in that plasma. Simple. In that plasma, uh, yeah. So you will also see the hormones. You will see the urea, right? Some amount of uric acid. So like waste products and everything will be there. Okay. Okay. So that's what we are going to see here in the. That's what we are going to see here in the plasma. Clear, bache? Clear, bache? So organic part of plasma is this part. 
right? The protein. So albumin, globulin, fibrinogen, prothrombin is there, right? Prothrombin is there. Okay, so albumin. First of all, let's start with what? Let's start with the albumin. So albumin, it is maximum, bache. Do you know that? Its amount is maximum. Do you know that Subhashini? Like if I talk about that uh, 6, uh, like if I just talk about the organic part of the plasma, you know that it is 7 to 9 percent. Right, Bache? So albumin, its amount is maximum there. Its amount is near about 4 percent. Okay, its amount is maximum there. It is near about 4 percent. And let me tell you Bache, this albumin is the smallest protein. Okay, its quantity is more, but it is the smallest protein. And you know, it is synthesized by liver. Do you know that? It is synthesized by liver. Now, the question here is, what is the function of albumin? Anyone here in the class? Anyone here in the class? Yes, albumin is the 4%, right? The maximum amount is of albumin. It is the smallest protein present, Pache. It is synthesized by the liver. Very important, right? But can you just tell me about the function? Excellent, Bache. Yeah, right. Its function is the osmotic balance, right? It is, yes, it is responsible to maintain, right? It is responsible to maintain blood colloidal osmotic pressure. Clear, Bache? It is responsible to maintain blood colloidal osmotic pressure. So, this is what it is going to do, right? So, albumin is going to maintain the blood colloidal osmotic pressure and it is important to maintain it, right? Why, Bache? Because see, uh, these proteins are very important in the blood. Now, I will give you one example. Uh, uh, you might know about the blotting, right? Blotting. Sometimes we say now that our body is blotted. Blotting is there. Right, or sometimes we even talk about the water retention by the bo uh, body organs. That our uh, body organs, they retain the water. Isn't it? Isn't it? That our body organs, they even retain the water. Isn't it? Now, why is it so? Let's say if in the, if you will take less amount of water, okay, you are not drinking sufficient water, then what will be the scenario? Tell me, what will be the scenario if you are not drinking the sufficient water? Give it a try. Give it a try. If you are not drinking, ha, blotting is kind of edema or swelling. Right? Not exactly the edema. Like ultimately it is happening, your tissue fluid will take more and more water. Right? That's why we feel things like that. But this is my question. If you will not drink sufficient water, okay. So that's for you. Okay? That will be your homework. I will see the answer in the comment section. You will tell me about this blotting. I am telling you that uh, your tissue fluid can absorb more water and the dehydration concept. You will tell me and let me finish this topic and then, right, then also we will discuss this. Clear, Bache? Then also we will discuss this. Done? So, this is about the albumin. Now, the next is your globulin, right? Immunoglobulin, I hope you remember that. Immunoglobulin, I hope you remember that. So, it is near about 2 to 2.5 percent of the proteins present in the blood, right? It is near about 2 to 2.5 percent of the proteins present in the blood. Isn't it? Isn't it? So, the word is globulin. The word is what, Solia? The word is what? It is globulin. So, again, Bache, this globulin, you can relate it even with the immunoglobulin. Right? You can even relate it with the immunoglobulin. So, these globulins are also synthesized by the liver. But yeah, this uh, globulins are also synthesized by the lymphoid organs as well. Not just by the blood, but by the lymphoid organs as well. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? So, globulin, it is 2 to 2.5 percent. It is synthesized by the liver and the lymphoid organs. Right, Bache? And the lymphoid organs. Is that clear? Is that clear? So, when you are talking about these globulins, their main function, what is their main function? What is the main function of these globulins? The main function is to destroy the foreign particle. Okay, to destroy the foreign particle, to destroy the uh, viruses, bacteria which are present in the body, which are present in the blood. So, you know about different, different types of globulins, alpha, beta, gamma globulins. 
find alpha globulins, beta globulins and the gamma globulin is there. So such type of globulins are present. So globulin it is, it is mainly helping in the defense mechanism. Subhashini, excellent bache. Right, it is mainly helping in the defense mechanism. You are right. Clear bache? Clear bache? So the immunoglobulins that we discuss, I hope you all know about the immunoglobulins. Right, so the immunoglobulins that we discuss, right, we also call them as antibodies, isn't it? That is antibody immunoglobulin, so Ig it is, right, so you know, remember there are different, different types of immunoglobulins, IgA, IgM, Ig, IgG, A, M, D and E, right, D and E, so this gamma globulin majorly, right this gamma globulin it is the one which is produced by lymphoid organs yes but it is the one which is produced by lymphoid organ and it fights with infection clear but it fights with foreign particles done done but so that's their role they are basically produced by the liver so this is about the globulins right so next is what next is the fibrinogen isn't it so do you know the role of fibrinogen or the prothrombin yeah do you know the role of fibrinogen and prothrombin obviously their amount is less when you're talking about the fibrinogen it is near about it is near about 0.3 percent right it is near about 0.3 percent what the fibrinogen okay the fibrinogen and where is it helping bache it is helping and yes it is also synthesized by liver it is also synthesized by liver okay and uh, it is inactive form this fibrinogen and it is synthesized by liver again so liver is very important here liver is going to form the yeah liver is going to form the proteins right the plasma proteins clear bache right so fibrinogen is there and then comes the then comes your prothrombin so ultimately as i said they are going to help where where oh okay they are basically going to help in the blood clotting and yes it is the fibrinogen which is the largest protein it is the fibrinogen which is the largest protein so small uh, smallest is your albumin but its amount is maximum clear bache? so that's about the fibrinogen so let's have a quick revision so blood it is making plasma is 55 percent which is uh, straw colored kind of pale yellow having water having proteins having solutes having waste now when you are talking about the formed elements here what do we have we have the cells rbcs wbcs platelets clear bache? so plasma is making 55 percent of the blood formed elements are making 45 percent of the blood right right so when you are talking about the uh, plasma here you guys can see what is present there in the plasma okay and the next to it see the complete detailed description here right the detailed explanation other okay so other than this fibrinogen as i said prothrombin is also there let me mention it here okay so prothrombin is also there so prothrombin is also which is inactive form it is also playing role in blood clotting clear its amount is 0.3 percent it is again synthesized by the liver fine it is also synthesized by the liver done that is your prothrombin fine bache that is your prothrombin clear okay so next is the formed element that we need to start next is formed elements and when it comes to the formed elements so it's 45 percent of the blood so here you have rbc's red blood cells you have WBCs, white blood cells, and you have platelets, okay, thrombocytes, clear, thrombocytes. So, RBCs, erythrocytes, WBCs, leukocytes, and when it comes to the platelets, they are thrombocytes. Okay, what are they? They are the thrombocytes. So, RBC, WBC and platelets are present there. Clear, bache? And platelets are present. So, let's start with the RBCs first. Okay. Let's start with the RBCs first. So, red blood corpuscles, white blood corpuscles and then comes the platelets. 
here which is then comes the platelet so in general if i have to tell you you know that the platelets they play role in the blood clotting wbcs they play role in the defense okay and uh, this uh, rbc you know that it is having the hemoglobin so it helps in the transport of the gases okay mainly it is for the oxygen transport so it's kind of you know the, they are the kind of main functions here na they are the kind of main functions here so let's start with this part that is your erythrocyte your rbc so you guys can see here right so they are the most abundant of all the cells in the blood right erythrocytes are what bachche subhashini they are the most abundant of all the all the cells of the blood so a healthy adult man okay so on an average they contain 5 million to 5.5 million of rbc per cubic mm of blood clear bachche 5 million to 5.5 million rbcs per cubic mm of blood that in, this in, uh, this in, uh, information is important please note down clear bachche so when you are talking about the rbcs right so in the case of humans yeah in the case of mammals they are what they are what biconcave enucleated in their mature state yes or no biconcave enucleated in their mature state yes or no i'm talking about the mammalian rbc it is going to be biconcave it is going to be enucleated okay it is going to be biconcave and enucleated right the erythrocyte fine bachche but yes it is without nucleus when it attains uh, maturity okay if the cell is not mature a newly formed rbc is still having the nucleus but once it attains the maturity it will become enucleated and yes here also we are having the exception your exception among mammal uh, among mammals is camel okay camel and that lemma done that they are the exception so here your rbc is going to be by convex it is going to be oval and it is going to be nucleated this part is important so camel is the main exception here fine that is the camel which is the main exception here done bachche right camel and llama just a minute they are the main exceptions here fine so here the rbc is biconvex it is oval and it is nucleated done bachche done bachche sure are you sure yes sure so rbcs are formed in red bone marrow in the adults so see they have clearly mentioned that rbcs are formed in okay just a minute yes so rbcs are formed in red bone marrow in the adults right red bone marrow in the adults so they are talking about the adults here so can you tell me where uh, where will be the production of rbcs in the embryonic stages anyone here in the class where that rbcs will form in during embryonic stages quick quick yes tell me anyone during embryonic stages seriously seriously is it just the liver no answer is incorrect see initially no doubt it starts in the yolk sac but then the spleen and liver will take over the function okay no doubt it is going to start in the yolk sac as well then it is the spleen and liver where the rbc production will be there but yes in the case of adults it will be there in the red bone marrow so that's important okay that's important so if they are asking adults then it is the red bone marrow but if they are asking that in during embryonic stages then mainly it is the liver and spleen initially it started in the yolk sac then then finally the liver and the spleen is that clear so as i said rbcs are devoid of nucleus in most of the mammals and they are biconcave now the point is why why the shape of the rbc it is biconcave right why the shape of the rbc why the okay 
shape of the rbc is bi concave right something like this that's how we draw na that's how uh, that's how we draw so this bi concave shape bachche it increases the surface area done bachche it increases the surface area done bachche so because of that the exchange will be easy fine that's why it is bi concave in shape because of that the exchange will be easy and moreover you know that in the rbc's that endoplasmic reticulum is also absent you know na endoplasmic reticulum the cell organelle endoplasmic reticulum the cell organelle even that endoplasmic reticulum is important so that's why in rbc right bachche some other structural proteins and even fats cholesterol they are present and they are going to provide the framework do you know that they are going to provide the framework that's the point here is that clear that's the point here right bachche right and moreover uh uh now i think you can relate it with the uh with that uh, breathing and exchange of gases chapter we have completed that chapter isn't it we have completed that chapter breathing and exchange of gases so remember i was telling you that in the case of rbc right uh, do you remember that chloride shift do you remember that chloride shift that bicarbonate from rbc it will move to plasma bicarbonate from rbc it will move to plasma clear bachche and chloride ion from plasma it will move to the rbc so do you remember that chloride shift do you remember that hamburger phenomena when we discuss the transport of carbon dioxide we talk about it we talk about the hamburger phenomena also known as chloride shift so what is happening here the bicarbonate ion hco3 negative from rbc will move to the plasma and from plasma that a chloride ion will move in right it will move in are you getting it yep are you getting it so that's chloride shift and you know this rbc membrane it is having that special property it is more permeable okay it is more permeable to that chloride and bicarbonate fine it is more permeable to that chloride and bicarbonate it is its a kind of special property or uh, or you can say that plasma membrane is in this way that is it is permeable to such ions okay it is permeable to such ions clear bachche clear bachche and moreover not just the endoplasmic reticulum even the mitochondria even the golgi apparatus even the mitochondria even the golgi apparatus they are absent fine they are absent in rbcs clear bachche they are absent in rbcs are you getting my point it is absent in rbcs endoplasmic reticulum mitochondria golgi apparatus everything is absent there in the rbcs and do you know why because main function of rbc is to carry the hemoglobin okay what is that hemoglobin it is the respiratory pigment what is the role of that respiratory pigment it provides the red, red color to our blood but along with that it helps in the transport of gases okay okay thank you ayush right transport of gases now the point here is bachcha if this rbc if it will start containing nucleus if it will start containing all the that organelles don't you think that these organelles will also demand they also need oxygen right if mitochondria will be there mitochondria will be like okay even i need to produce the atp isn't it that type of things are going to happen so rbc is like okay, okay fine i do not want any of the fight any fight so i am not going to keep any organelle i'm not going to keep nucleus right when i'll attain maturity i will just keep hemoglobin only clear bachche i will just keep hemoglobin only clear 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 is that clear yes bachcha is that clear sure 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 110% should be lock it right should we lock it is it clear okay so that's what you need to keep in your mind so that's how this uh, this uh, rbc works okay and moreover one more thing is there in the case of rbc is the rolex formation like all of these rbcs they can you know just they can just pile they can just pile up they can just pile up they can form that rolex read about it that's your homework fine even read about it that's your homework fine bachche so this is about your rbcs and moreover now i have one question here one general question here so now i'm saying okay so yeah so now bachche i'm saying that in the case of rbcs okay what am i saying here 
that in the case of RBCs, I told you that nucleus is absent when they attain the maturity and moreover even the mitochondria is absent. That's what I just said. Tell me. Bache, that's what I just said that even your, right, that even the nucleus is absent, right, when they attain the uh, maturity and along with that nucleus, yes, bache, along with that nucleus, what is absent? What is absent? Yes, mitochondria is absent. So, can you just tell me that how these RBCs are going to get the, uh, yeah, how these RBCs are going to get the energy then, right? How are they going to get the energy then if they do not have the uh, mitochondria and all? Anyone here in the class? Just give it a try. I'm saying that they do not. RBCs, they do not. RBCs, they do not contain what? They do not contain what? They do not contain the mitochondria. So, obviously, bachche, the cytoplasm is there. And in the cytoplasm, there will be the glycolysis. Right? There will be the glycolysis. That's something important. Your RBC is dependent on glycolysis for the energy. Okay? In the chapter respiration in plants, we will discuss it. So, don't be like, ma'am, why are you teaching extra? It is not extra. It is there in your NCRT. It's just that I'm relating to different topics altogether. Right? And when you prepare, fine. When you prepare for the competitive exams, that's what you have to learn. Right? You cannot just read one chapter and you can just drop it there. No. No, you should know about that concepts and you, you need to apply that concept to the other topics as well. Like right now, I told you about the RBC membrane. I told you RBC membrane is more permeable for certain ions like the chloride ion, like the bicarbonate ion. So, you should immediately relate it with the hamburger phenomena. You should immediately relate it with the chlorides effect. Is that clear? You should immediately relate it with the chlorides effect. Is that clear? Yes or no? So, here what is going to happen? The enzymes of glycolysis, they are present. Okay. Okay. So, so glycolysis is going to take place here because for glycolysis, you know that, right? It is oxygen independent process which will take place in cytoplasm. What is glycolysis? It is an oxygen independent process which will take place in cytoplasm. So, you know that glyco means glucose, lysis means breakdown. So, here there will be the breakdown of glucose and that's how, you know, the RBCs are going to get there energy is that clear that's how the rbcs are going to get their energy but your enzymes for crab cycle they are also absent here they are not present even there is no mitochondria of course okay there is no mitochondria here fine fine any other doubt sure so when it comes to the shape of the rbc now you know the shape of the rbc so if i talk about the diameter yes if i talk about the diameter or you can say that the size of rbc it's near about 7 micro, right? It's near about 7 to 8 micro meter, right? If I talk about the diameter, first of all, let's talk about the diameter. So, 7 to 8 micro meter. Okay, what's that? It is 7 to 8 micro meter. Fine, 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 fine. And if you talk about the lifespan here, so lifespan is near about? 120 days fine it is near about 120 days so that's what you have to remember okay so finally they will be destroyed okay finally they will be destroyed done bache yes sure Sure. So, for the production of RBC, you know that if the RBC, the amount of RBC, if it is less, so you know that it can result in anemia. Okay? Anemia. And basically, ions, vitamin B12, folic acid, they all are very important for the formation of your uh, RBC as well and the hemoglobin. RBC as well as hemoglobins. Clear, bachche? RBCs as well as hemoglobins. Clear? So, size, that, right, size, here you guys can see the diameter as well. So, lifespan and if they are low, it is known as anemia. The condition is known as anemia. Done, bache? So, if there is an abnormal increase in RBC count, if there is an abnormal increase in RBC count, then it is erythrocytosis. What is the word that, will, that you will use for it? Erythrocytosis. So, if there is a decrease in RBC count, if there is decrease in RBC count, then it will be erythrocytopenia. 
What's that? It is erythrocytopenia. Okay, bache. Now, when you are talking about the, yeah, now we are talking about the RBCs, the blood. So, bache, 100 ml, you know, 100 ml of blood contains near about 12 to 15 gram or 16 gram of hemoglobin. Do you know that? 100 ml of blood. So, when we go out for the blood test right they used to tell us about the hemoglobin level they used to say that if it is in girls if it is 11 12 13 it's healthy it's good in the case of boys it can be 14 15 okay so actually that amount is in the that amount is in the 100 ml of blood never ever forget that okay so you are not checking it for five to six liters of blood no just for the 100 ml of blood fine just for the 100 ml of blood clear sure any doubt yep any doubt so, I will ask you one question that if I will put RBC in a hypotonic solution, what is going to happen? If I will put RBC in a hypotonic solution, what is going to ha happen? Yes. I am saying that I am going to put the RBC, yes, I am going to put the RBC in the hypotonic solution. What is going to happen? But it is hypotonic solution. Water will move in, of course. If it is the hypotonic solution, hypotonic means more water, less solute here. Okay, so there will be the endosmosis. Your RBC can even swell and even it can burst. Why? Why? Because first of all, in the case of animal cells, there is no cell wall. So if they will be placed in the hypotonic solution and if there is water water and water they can get destroyed and moreover in rbc i just told you they do not have the proper you know the skeleton or, or endoplasmic reticulum is absent the protein fat cholesterol they are just making the skeleton okay so it will burst fine fine so please relate one topic with another that's important for you now do you know that the deficiency of vitamin b12 even in the chapter digestion and absorption we have studied that Right, that in our stomach, if you remember, in our stomach there are certain cells. I know this portion is deleted, but still give it a try. Still try to answer it. Give it a try. Quick, you know now when you talk about the stomach, when you talk about the stomach, if you remember that we are having certain cells, like your auxentic cell, also known as parietal cell. So that used to release HCL and along with that castle intrinsic gastric factor. Right, castle intrinsic gastric factor. I know this part is deleted, bache, but the point is, right, it is somewhere associated to body fluid and circulation. So, yes, there are chances that they can ask you the question. Fine. So, I am saying that, you know that in the stomach, parietal or auxentric cells are there, which used to release castle intrinsic gastric factor. And that castle intrinsic gastric factor helps in the absorption of vitamin B12. So, if vitamin B12 is not there in our diet, if there is the deficiency, you know what can happen because of the deficiency of vitamin B12? Your RBC, your RBC, the RBC size grow abnormally. Right, the size of RBC, it grows abnormally. Right, it will be abnormally large. It will be abnormally large. So, what will you call it? You will call it as macrocytes. Fine, macrocytes. And because it is immature, but it will just grow in size. Ultimately, ultimately RBC is what? It is immature. Right, it will just grow in size. Because it is growing abnormally, it will get destroyed fine it will get destroyed are you getting it so vitamin b12 deficiency can result in the enlarged right enlarged rbc which is immature which will be destroyed of course in the spleen you know our body is having an organ called spleen which is the graveyard of rbc that's what you have to understand right so that's all and even if let's say iron is not there iron is not present in our diet in that case rbc size will be less but and even hemoglobin will be less Okay, that is also not a good condition. That is also not a good condition. So, see, let's revise it from NCRT. So, iron containing complex protein hemoglobin is present. So, that's why the color is red also. So, healthy individual has 12 to 16 grams. Yes, I mentioned 12 to 15. Now, you write it as 16. 
because we have to follow the NCRT at any cost. So 12 to 16 grams of hemoglobin in every 100 ml of blood. So this information is important every 100 ml of blood so these molecules they play a significant role in transport of respiratory gases and they have an average lifespan of 120 days after which they will be destroyed in spleen so what is spleen of the part uh, the organ of course right it is somewhere near to the stomach we will discuss that when we will start the lymph uh, lymphatic system okay so in the case of spleen you are saying it has graveyard of rbcs it is also known as a reservoir of rbcs It is also known as a reservoir of RBCs. So here in this case, when they are RBCs, they are destroyed. They will be destroyed in spleen. Okay, and moreover, the extra RBCs they are also stored in the spleen. That's why you even call it as a reservoir, and you even call it as graveyard of the RBCs. Fine, even you call it as a spleen, uh, the reservoir of RBCs, and even the graveyard of RBCs. So that's what you need to keep in your mind. Clear, bache? That's what you need to keep in your mind. Is that clear? Sure, 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 done. So this is about the RBCs. So now when you talk about the hemoglobin, let's not miss this part. Let's revise it quickly. Okay, so which hemoglobin, you know that that's the respiratory pigment. And when you talk about this respiratory pigment here, heme, heme is there and the globin is there. So globin is what? Globin is the protein part. Globin is what? Globin is the protein part and heme that pigment. Okay. So here you know that central metal ion is what? It is your iron. Right. That is your Fe. Sure, bache. What is it? That is your Fe. Fine. Fine. So iron is present in the hemoglobin and it is in Fe2 plus form. This is important. And when it is the globin part, the protein part, so it's actually a quaternary protein. What's that? It is actually a quaternary protein. So it is having how many chains? It is having four polypeptide chains. Okay. It is having four polypeptide chains. Two alpha chains and two beta chains. Two alpha chains and two beta chains. Clear, bache? Two alpha chains and two beta chains done 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 that's hemoglobin okay can i ask you something uh, we have even uh, discussed it in breathing and exchange of gases that uh, this 100 ml of blood i told you it is having 12 to 16 gram of hemoglobin so can you tell me the amount of oxygen that it is going to transport can you tell me about the amount of oxygen that it can transport tell me exactly 5 ml right so 100 ml of 100 ml of blood can transport 5 ml of oxygen can you tell me about the uh, co2 level as well what about the co2 what about the carbon dioxide four ml of carbon dioxide excellent okay excellent so next is leukocytes that is your wbcs next is what next is leukocytes that is your wbcs fine that is your wbcs that is white blood cells so but here you are going to discuss them in two you are divide, going to divide them in two parts a granulocytes and then granulocytes a granulocytes and then granulocytes so here we have two tricks one is m L A, another is your Ben G. Fine. One is M L A, another is your Ben G. So when it is M L A, M stands for monocytes, L stands for lymphocytes, A stands for A granulocytes, isn't it? A stands for A granulocytes. Now when it is Ben G, okay, B stands for basophil. 
P stands for eosinophil. N stands for neutrophil. N stands for neutrophil. Okay, so these are the type of WBC. So monocytes are there, lymphocytes are there. And then basophil, eosinophil, neutrophil. So this is the trick, Ben G. What's that? It is Ben G. Clear? So now, Bucci, when you look at these A granulocytes, what's the point here? Actually, here in the cytoplasm, you won't see any granules. Like when we observe the WBC structure, okay? When we observe the WBC structure, we see in WBC structure, right, that uh, obviously we'll also talk about the nucleus here, but along with that nucleus, sometimes we see that cytoplasm is having some granules, okay? So if cytoplasm is having granules, right, then you are calling it as granulocyte. If no granules are there in the cytoplasm, then it will be, it will be, yes, but Jyoti, it will be a granulocyte. Clear, bache? So, without granule, a granulocytes. With granule, it will be, yes, with granule, it will be, quickly tell me. It will be granulocytes. And please tell us the names as well. So, it is Ben G. What is it? It is Ben G. So, here, bache, when you are talking about these monocytes and the lymphocytes, you even need to focus on the, you even need to focus on the nucleus shape. We will draw a table here. Like when you are talking about the monocytes and lymphocytes, first of all, you should remember they are the examples of A granulocytes. And here you should remember, right, that basophil, eosinophil, neutrophils, they are the example of granulocytes. So when you are talking about the monocytes, bache, so here the nucleus is bean or the kidney shape, right? The nucleus is bean or the kidney shape. You will see the variety here in the nucleus of WBCs. Now, when you are talking about the lymphocytes, here the nucleus will be round. Right? It will be round shaped. Right, Bache? So, now when it is the basophil, right? When it is the basophil, so it's simple, S. Focus on this S. So, it is S-shaped nucleus. So, S-shaped nucleus means it will be tri-lobed. Right, what type of nucleus is there? It is the trilobed nucleus. Now, when it is eosinophil, eosinophil is also known as acidophil. Okay, it is also known as acidophil. So, here the nucleus is going to be bilobed. And neutrophils, here the nucleus is multi-lobed. Fine, the nucleus is multi-lobed. Fine, but So, here it is uh, bean shaped, lymphocyte round shaped, basophil trilobed or S shaped, eosinophil bilobed, neutrophil multi-lobed. Fine, neutrophil multi -lobe. So, yes, the nucleus shape is important. Fine, the shape of the nucleus is important. And moreover, bache, in NCRT, you might have studied this PMNL. Okay, in human health and disease, PMNL. So, it's polymorphonuclear leukocyte. Right, PMNL means poly morphonuclear leukocyte clear it is polymorphonuclear leukocyte so poly means many morph means form nucleus is having many forms here the wbc is where nucleus is having many forms there so the best example neutrophil because they are multi-lobed what are they what are they these neutrophils are what they are the multi-lobed clear bache? they are what they are the multi-lobed is that clear is that clear so do you know the most abundant yes do you know the most abundant type of WBCs? Let me draw the table. So, let's start with the MLA. So, monocyte, L means lymphocytes. Okay. So, it comes under what? A granulocytes. Then comes the basophil. E for eosinophil, which is also known as acidophil. And then comes the neutrophil. Fine. Then comes the neutrophil. So, let's start with the nucleus shape. Okay. Let's start with what? Nucleus shape. So, when you are talking about the nucleus shape here, so monocyte, I just told you, bache, it's bean or the kidney shape. It's bean or the kidney shape. It is round, right? Here it is, 
बेजोफिल ओके इट इज एस शेप्ड और ट्राइलो इट इज एस शेप्ड और ट्राइलो हियर इट इज बायो एंड हियर इट इज मल्टीलोप्ड फाइन हियर इट इज मल्टीलोप्ड क्लियर बच्चे so the nucleus shape is important now let's talk about their concentration right what we need to discuss now we need to talk about their concentration then we will be discussing their size as well okay so basically let's talk about the okay let's talk about the number number so when it is the yes maximum is your neutrophil so neutrophil is near about 60 to 65% of total leukocyte count right do observe do observe your uh, you know blood test reports okay so in the blood test reports they used to mention a tlc what is tlc it's total leukocyte count right that in blood in your blood what is the total amount of wbcs present so it is what it is the total leukocyte count clear bachche it is the total leukocyte count clear bachche sure sure so here you guys can see the nucleus and the different shapes now we are talking about the amount so neutrophil they are the most abundant 60 to 65% and after the neutrophil it will be the lymphocyte okay after the neutrophils it will be the lymphocytes and they are near about 20 to 25% fine bachche they are near about 20 to 25% fine okay then comes the monocytes of course 6 to 8 percent your basophils are minimum they are even less than 1 percent right basophils are minimum they are less than 1 percent fine bache so maximum is your neutrophil then comes your monocytes then comes your uh, sorry then comes your lymphocytes then comes your monocytes and then comes your eosinophils eosinophils are near about 2 to 3 percent okay so they are making 2 to 3 percent of the tlc of total lymphocyte count so now let's say now i will tell you about the functions of these wbcs as well on the basis of that right uh, like let's say uh, if in your body a certain type of wbc if its amount is more so it can indicate the allergy also it can indicate the infection also that's why right these blood tests are important that's why with the help of these blood tests uh, blood uh, blood tests we basically trace that things clear bachche we basically trace that things done 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 sure any other doubt any other doubt and can you tell me about their life span like i'll give you only one example i'll give you only one example that your lymphocytes their life span is near about 5 to 7 days in blood they can survive for 5 to 7 days in blood certain wbcs they can they can just survive for uh, less than 24 hours okay so that's your homework okay that's your homework done right so now let's talk about the functions of these wbc so when we talk about the functions i'll clear one two important points here bache your monocytes they are phagocytotic monocytes they are phagocytotic your neutrophils they are also phagocytotic in nature only two wbcs are phagocytotic in nature right only these two wbcs they are phagocytotic in nature so do you know the meaning of being phagocytotic do you know the meaning of being phagocytotic means they can engulf the foreign particle being phagocytotic means that they can engulf the foreign particle so the monocyte and the neutrophil only they are phagocytotic and bachche these monocytes all together right they will form a giant monocyte and you used to call that as macrophage how many of you remember the word macrophage or do you right how many of you remember this word macrophage macrophages they are phagocytotic cells now so basically your monocytes they'll become giant they can form these this macrophage fine bachche they can form this macrophage done 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 so they are what so monocytes they are motile they are phagocytotic right they can destroy the foreign bodies in our body foreign particles in our body okay okay done yes and then comes your lymphocytes so i hope you even know about the lymphocytes yes even they are motile 
and you know that when it comes to the lymphocyte you talk about the b lymphocytes and you talk about the t lymphocytes isn't it what we discuss bachche we talk about the b lymphocytes we talk about the t lymphocytes and bachche b lymphocyte is going to form the antibodies t lymphocytes will form what it will form cytotoxic killer t cells so that's how they will pay, play the role in the immunity and just for your knowledge although we will discuss it in human health and disease your b lymphocytes they are the part of antibody mediated immune system your t lymphocytes they are the part of they are the part of cell mediated immune system okay they are the part of cell mediated immune system clear bachche right so next is the basophil so when you talk about the basophil they release right basophil they release bachche histamine it releases heparin and serotonin these are the chemicals that are released by the basophil histamine okay histamine heparin serotonin serotonin although uh, you know na it is a neurotransmitter serotonin it's a vasoconstrictor right it's a vasoconstrictor serotonin so basophils can release histamine right if there is you know sometimes happen na uh, yeah histamines are used for can you tell me what is the role of histamine yep can you tell me what is the role of histamine i told you that these are going to release your basophils are going to release the histamine heparin and serotonin right histamine heparin and serotonin this is a very basic question so tell me what is the role of yes tell me what is the role of this histamine quick tell me histamine very simple it is no bachche histamine don't you think that it causes the allergic reactions right when there is any allergen in your body histamine will be released histamine yes right so histamine causes what histamine causes allergy so when whenever there is any allergic response in our body the histamine will be released okay so whenever there is uh, allergen in our body these histamines will be released bachche okay these histamines will be released okay so it is going to cause the allergy anaphylactic shock right that severe case of allergy histamine vasodilators they are now when the word is heparin i hope you remember this heparin is natural anti blood coagulant okay it's a natural anti blood coagulant right right so it will not allow the blood to get clotted or to get clotted in a uh, to get coagulated or clotted in the intact blood vessel right so in the intact blood vessels blood will not clot because of the presence of heparin and it is important because if in intact blood vessel if in our body right if in blood vessels the clots will start forming it is going to uh, it will affect the blood transportation okay okay so they are not good for our body let's say if they're in the carotid artery if there is any blood clot okay the blood flow will be restricted that brain cells can die also the stroke can occur fine the stroke can occur then comes the serotonin which is a neurotransmitter also but this serotonin here is a vasoconstrictor it constricts the blood vessel so somewhere basophil you know they are just like the the mast cells okay in our immune system we discuss about the mast cells that mast cells they also release same chemicals they are basically for that inflammatory response sometimes in our body we feel that inflammation no? inflammation kind of itching inflammation right so so this basophil they are just like that right they are these cells are just like that right then comes the eosinophils bachche eosinophils are your non phagocytotic i told you already right and they have anti histamine properties fine bachche these eosinophils they have anti histamine properties anti histamine properties eosinophil also known as acidophil see bachche basophil acidophil right it will get stained with the basic dye it will get stained with the acidic dye neutrophil means neutral now the point here is what's the point here right anti histamine properties are there this eosinophil it is having the anti histamine properties see eosinophil allergy okay allergy e 
E related. Allergy E. Can you relate it? Eosinophil. Allergy E. So during allergical reactions in your body, right? Right. These eosinophils will be released. So they will release antihistamines. They will, you know, try to kill that allergen. So they are going to play the role here. Right. They are going to play the role here. So eosinophils, right, they resist the infection. They are associated with the allergic reaction. Right. They resist the infection. Fine. They are associated with the allergic reaction. So they are going to protect your body from allergy and the parasitic infection. Right. So they protect body from allergy and right they protect the body from allergy and parasitic infections. Fine and neutrophils as I said they are the phagocytotic cells so obviously they are going to engulf the foreign particles. So this is all about the WBCs bache right and yes we need to revise few more points as well related to these WBCs so focus on the NCRT. So they are leukocytes WBCs white blood cells they are bache they are colorless because they do not have the hemoglobin. So yes they are nucleated they have the nucleus and they are comparatively lesser in number like I said now. 5 million to 5.5 million in per cubic meter of the blood we have the RBCs but here if you look at the WBCs they are 6,000 to 8,000 per cubic mm of blood so yes this is important to remember right Bache Gautam this is important to remember so leukocytes are short-lived they are short-lived right some leukocytes they can even get destroyed in less than 24 hours like your monocytes okay like your monocytes if I okay I'll tell you so like your basophils can survive for 10 hours okay and uh, yeah they can survive for 10 hours right bache your monocytes can get destroyed in less than 24 hours fine bache and your neutrophils can get destroyed in 12 hours so it is like that right so they are generally what they are generally short lived so we have two main categories i already told you granulocytes and agranulocytes so you can write the trick here so benji like we have the benten no have you seen benten ever benten so same way benji okay and when it is the agranulocyte it will be mla so neutrophils eosinophils basophils they are granulocytes lymphocytes and monocytes they are agranulocytes right so most abundant is neutrophil you have to remember this pache right you should know about their amounts as well fine you should know about their amount as well so see eosinophil 2 to 3 percent resist infections and are also associated with the allergic infections right and this is about the lymphocytes here so just look at this table okay we'll share the pdf right after the class so their function is also explained here so see their function also with the help of these diagrams so see is eosinophil the uh, nucleus is bilobna something like this clear bache and then comes the neutrophil it's like this okay polymorphonuclear leukocyte so see monocytes they are bean shaped lymphocytes they have rounded nucleus and their function is also written here i will share the uh, i will share the pdf with you so see even this question has been asked in the paper RBC, platelets, eosinophil. So how, how can you figure it out with the help of the nucleus shape? Okay. Done? So that's what you have to do. Fine, that's what you have to do. Okay, so next topic is of blood groups, but oh, sorry, before that we need to talk about the platelets as well. Mm. So next is platelets, okay, and these platelets, they are also known as thrombocytes, 
what are they they are known as thrombocytes so they are going to play role in the blood clotting so that's something very important isn't it that's something very important yes bachche platelets okay platelets and yes 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 how can i forget two or three more points yes here we missed it we missed it see leukocytosis increase in wbc amount and leukocytopenia decrease in rbc sorry wbc amount so if it is erythrocytopenia decrease in rbc amount if it is leukocytopenia it is decrease in wbc amount okay it is decrease in wbc amount clear bachche yes so if there is abnormal increase of wbcs like abnormally wbcs are increasing uh, so this is leukemia that condition is leukemia right the blood cancer so you should know about these terms gautam bachche definitely i will teach you the new families as well but i don't think that you should waste your time like this fine you are again and again you are sending the same message if you are that free you can just find out the uh, content for that families and you can revise okay and bachche do you know what is diabetes do you know what is diabetes anyone do you know yes what is diabetes anyone yep diabetes what is it see in the case of wbcs they have a property like this is the blood capillary right wbcs they used to show the amoeboid movement what type of movement they are going to show they are going to show the amoeboid movement the creeping movement so with the help uh, so because of that these wbcs from this blood vessel they can just move to the surrounding do you know that right these wbcs they will show the creeping movement and because of that creeping movement they can move into the surrounding bachche they can just squeeze out right they can just squeeze out from the blood capillaries and they will go in the surrounding and that's why we even see that in the lymph also lymph is not having your wbcs sorry rbcs but lymph will uh, lymph is having certain wbcs okay so this diabetes is a property of wbcs that you know they they shows the cummy void movement the creeping movement and they just squeeze out from the blood capillaries into the surrounding done from blood capillaries into the surrounding done bachche okay so next is your platelets so they are also non nucleated colorless fragments do you know that they are non nucleated colorless fragments non nucleated colorless fragments what your uh, platelets fine what your platelets clear bachche clear bachche so if i talk about their size it is near about 2 to 3 micro right it is its size is near about 2 to 3 micro and life span is 2 to 5 days okay life span is 2 to 5 days okay its life span is what 2 to 5 days then bachche so if you talk, talk about their count so their count is near about 1.5 to okay 1.3 to 1.5 lakh obviously per cubic mm right per cubic mm isn't it 1.44 it's 1.5 to 3.5 lakh per cubic mm nan bachche so this is about the platelets so they are known as thrombocytes so they are without right without nucleus so there will be large blood vessel which is known as mega karyocyte there is a large blood vessel which is known as mega karyocyte and that mega karyocyte will form the platelets fine that mega karyocytes will form the platelets is that clear sure bachche sure 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 
ओके सो प्लेटलेट्स आर नथिंग दे आर डिस्क लाइक ओवल शेप्ड बच्चे फाइंड दे आर डिस्क लाइक ओवल शेप्ड एंड आई टोल्ड यू अबाउट देयर अमाउंट एज वेल ओके आई टोल्ड यू अबाउट देयर अमाउंट एज वेल एंड येस थ्रोम्बो साइटो पीनिया वेयर एवर द वर्ड इज पीनिया यू नो दैट वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस वर्ड पीनिया सो अगेन इट इज द डिक्रीज इन प्लेटलेट काउंट वॉट इज इट इट इज द डिक्रीज इन प्लेटलेट्स count so you know that platelets are very important for blood clotting if platelets are not there if let's say platelet count is less and if a person is having the injury the excessive amount of blood flow will be there the right bache which is again not good okay which is again not good got it done bache so this is about the platelet so i have one question for all of you that why in dengue fever right why in dengue fever platelet count decreases that's your question We used to say na that platelet decreases when there is a dengue fever. So you have to tell me why. You have to tell me why. No doubt, dengue in dengue fever it is going to happen. But you have to tell me the reason. Okay? You have to tell me the reason. Okay? Sure. So this is all about the blood and the cells there. Okay? This is all about the blood and the cells there. any doubt sure so let's revise it from ncrt and then let's move to the next topic so see this platelets thrombocytes they are the cell fragments produced from megakaryocytes what are megakaryocytes they are the special cells in the bone marrow the word is mega mega means large karyocyte the word is related to the nucleus okay so blood normally is having 1.5 lakhs to 3.5 lakhs platelet per cubic meter so platelets can release the substances which are involved in the blood clotting or coagulation right if their number is less it can result in the clotting disorder can you give me the example of yes bachche can you just give me the example of one clotting disorder can you just give me the example of one clotting disorder anyone here in the class yep can you just give me the example of one clotting disorder any example any example that you have any example that you have tell me hemophilia exactly that is your bleeders disease definitely so the next topic that we need to start is blood group and then coagulation this chapter is easy bachche we can finish it very quickly okay so then we'll be starting the human circulatory system so okay fine so it's 736 right so you have break till uh right in so i'll give you the small small breaks and then finally a dinner break and let's finish this chapter today so your break is till okay 750 that's all fine that's a perfect tea break so i'll see you then
Hi, Vichy, how are you? Good. So let's start. Let's start the topic, okay? Hmm. Done. So let's start the next topic that is of blood grouping. Okay. This topic is important and easy as well, of course. So, what is the next topic? It is the blood grouping, and you all know about the different different blood groups. Clear which is so Carl Landsteiner, he discovered the blood group. Who discovered the blood group? Carl Landsteiner. Carl Landsteiner discovered the blood group, okay, Carl Landsteiner and he discovered the ABO blood grouping system, fine, he discovered what, he discovered the ABO blood grouping system, okay, bachi, done bachi and his students D. Castello and Sterling. Okay, D. Castello and Sterling, they discovered AB blood group. Fine, they discovered AB blood group. But when we talk about the blood group, you know that we discuss about the A blood group, about the B blood group, about the AB blood group and about the O blood group, isn't it? So, A, B and O. These blood groups were discovered by Carl Landsteiner, but... D. Castello and Sterling, the students of uh, Carl Landsteiner, they discovered the AB blood grouping system. Okay, they discovered what? They discovered the AB. They discovered the AB blood grouping system. There, right? So now, if I relate it with the genetics part, so I hope you remember that A and B. They show uh, this AB blood group. It shows the co-dominance. Both the both the alleles are expressing themselves simultaneously. If you are in class 11th, you are not going to understand this part, but it's okay. In genetics, you will. Right? So, Nokbi. Ma'am, I'm 25 years old. I'm preparing for NEET. Okay, you should. Very good. And then please prepare. Do not spam here. His students discovered AB blood group, but he discovered AB and O. Fine. Pavan, it is like that. His, he discovered AB and O. So, how do we decide the blood group? It's very simple. See, this is your RBC, right? Here you have the surface of RBC, the membrane of RBC. So, here on the surface of membrane uh, RBC, there are going to be certain glycoproteins. There are going to be certain glycoproteins, right? There are going to be certain and uh, there are going to be certain antigens, bache, and that antigens are going to decide the blood group. Are you getting my point? On the surface of RBCs will be, uh, right, there will be the presence of certain antigens and that antigens, right, that antigens are going to decide, that antigens are going to decide the, they are going to decide what? They are going to decide that which blood group will be there. Now, what if there is something, uh, yeah, it's very simple, right? So, antigen on RBC surface will decide the blood group. But the point is, what is this antigen? What is it made up of? Isn't it? What is it made up of? See, uh, like uh, first of all, let me explain you the basic part which is given in NCRT. Here I will go little beyond NCRT. Wait. So, if RBC surface, RBC surface, if it contains A antigen, okay, if it is having the A antigen, which blood group will be there then? The blood group will be A. The blood group will be A. Okay, so now you know that when you talk about the blood, what do we have in the blood? We have the plasma and then we have the RBCs, right? We have the plasma and then we have the RBCs, yes or no? The plasma is there and RBC is there. So, if RBC is having the antigen A, the blood group will be A, okay? And in the, anti, in the plasma, the antibody against B blood group will be there, 
right i hope you know that like let's say you know that if i am having like my blood group is ab positive so i am a universal recipient okay now when you talk about these blood groups a b ab and o blood group is there so in that case you know that if a person is in the need of the blood transfusion so doctors are going to make sure that if a person is having a blood group that person should get k blood right a blood group isn't it isn't it it is like that right i hope you know about it it is like that right now my point is why why they are doing so because if let's say my blood group is a and i'm getting the b blood group so in my plasma antibodies are there in my plasma antibodies are there and that antibodies are going to destroy the a blood group okay there will be the clumping what will be there there will be the clumping and this clumping is also known as a glutination right this clumping is also known as a glutination are you getting it are you getting it so but what is happening actually so if rbc surface is having a antigen that person will have in the plasma wait let me put it nicely So antigen on RBC surface, if the antigen is A antigen, which antigen is there? If it is the A antigen, antibody in plasma will be against B blood group. So it will be anti B, isn't it? It will be anti B. So the person is having A blood group. Am I right? The person is having A blood group. Now on the RBC surface, if the antigen B is present, right? So antibody in the plasma will be against A blood group. It will be against A blood group. A blood group will be the corner here. Right. So, see, the blood group is B here. Now, let's say if both the antigens are there on the RBC surface, A as well as B. So, no antibody will be there in the plasma because RBC is having both the antigen. So, there is no point to have any antibody in plasma because you know that if there will be any antibody, it will destroy the its own rbcs right so there will be no antibody in the plasma okay so blood group is you know that ab blood group now let's say if there is no antigen on rbc surface okay so antibody in plasma will be against both the blood group anti a as well anti b as well and the person is having blood group o clear bache and the person is having bache blood group o is that clear right are you sure so a antigen b antigen a and b antigen no antigen so you should know about the antibodies as well clear you should know about the antibodies so that's why ab blood group is considered as the universal recipient because it doesn't contain any antibody in its plasma so even if you will give the a blood group the b blood group okay yeah ab blood group it is not going to react and which one is the universal donor it is the o blood group fine it is the o blood group which is the universal donor fine but which is the universal donor so that's what you need to remember now little extra see actually it's not like that when i'm saying this is o blood group okay this is rbc i am saying that this is the o blood group okay so we used to say now that o blood group means no antigen that's what we are saying O blood group means no antigen. But che, actually it is not like that. There is one basic antigen which is always present that is known as H antigen. Okay. There is one basic antigen which is always present that is it. That is the H antigen. Now you must be thinking that ma'am what is the meaning of this. La, let me. Okay. Let me give you one example. Uh, let's say you have the vanilla powder. Fine. I don't know why I'm giving such examples, but okay. Let's say you have the vanilla powder, right? I'm sure you like the vanilla shakes or something, right? Maybe you have tried. Tell me in the chat section, you know, na, butterscotch, vanilla. So let's say you have the vanilla powder. Now you have the vanilla powder. It is something basic. Now if you're directly putting it in a milk, right? You are making the vanilla shake. Fine. You are making the vanilla shake. If you are putting in the 
right if you are putting in the milk plus chocolate right or you can say that coffee if in the coffee you are putting it okay milk that coffee and then the vanilla powder so you are basically making the coffee having the well uh, vanilla flavor as well right i don't know whether this example is right or wrong but i think you can understand right so vanilla powder is something basic if i'm putting it in just in milk i'm getting vanilla shape if i'm putting it in a cold coffee i'm getting the coffee having vanilla flavor something like that right i know it's a very bad example but it can help okay so same way you have the h antigen so when i'm saying antigen it is present on rbc surface of course so when i'm saying h antigen but obviously it is made up of something right it is made up of something it is made up of certain compounds it is made up of what it is made up of certain compounds yes or no tell me yes or no yes or no like let's say h antigen means it will be having your n acetyl n acetyl glucosamine i have to check whether it is glucose or uh, galactose fucose is there and yeah galactose is there like basically when you are talking about these antigens right it is not like that there is a very special structure ultimately they are the chemical compounds fine rt ultimately they are what ultimately they are the ultimately they are the chemical compound only right they are the chemical compound only like let's say if uh, uh, the n acetyl n acetyl glucosamine this is your fucose this is your galactose i'm using the symbols here okay i'm just using the symbols here so let's say this is your n acetyl glucosamine it is attached to the rbc surface then it is attached to your galactose and then it is attached to your fucose that type of structure right this is your rbc surface fine this is your rbc surface so ultimately this h antigen is nothing h antigen is nothing it is also made up of certain chemical compounds like it is having the n acetyl glucosamine fucose and the galactose n acetyl glucosamine fucose and the galactose that's what it contains fine so this is something basic okay so your o blood group is having this basic thing the h antigen now let's say okay let's say does this antigen affect if we have positive no 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 jyoti it is not related to that part okay it is not at all related to that part it is very simple now from this h antigen if i have to make the a blood group i'm telling you this is extra if you want to leave it you can i can also make the b blood group this is something basic bache this is something basic like you have your dough right you can make the simple roti as well right you can put the stuffing and you can make the parantha as well i i don't know why but i have such examples only and right now maybe i am hungry that's why okay so all my examples are you know revolving around the food so might be i'm hungry i don't know so h antigen is something basic like let's say you have this basic pillar right if you are putting a triangular structure over it it looks like that if you are putting a square over it it will look like that if you will put a put a circle over it it is going to look like that but ultimately this structure is the common structure this structure is the common structure clear bache right so same is the case here the h antigen is something common so o blood group will also have that okay h antigen is something common and o blood group is also having that so h antigen is made up of your n acetyl glucosamine right we are denoting it with the help of this square and then the fucose and then the galactose is there so when to this h antigen if i have to make the a blood group right jyoti if i have to make what if i have to make the a blood group so what will i add extra here i will add one i will add n acetyl galactosamine right what will i add here n acetyl galactosamine this is not the glucosamine it is the galactosamine like suppose to this structure if i have to make the a blood group so i will add one n acetyl galactosamine so in the case of b blood group i will add galactose so if i have to make the b blood group let's say this is the rbc surface i have okay to that rbc surface right your n acetyl glucosamine will be attached galactose will be attached fucose will be attached and an acetyl galactosamine will be attached like this so h antigen is something basic okay so when to this h antigen these compounds will be uh, when these compounds will be 
added here then they will decide whether it is a blood group or b blood group okay so simple h antigen means o blood group right so if to that h antigen n acetyl galactosamine is attached a blood group if galactose is attached b blood group like this and who's going to decide that rahul who's going to decide that genes right genes the alleles okay who's going to decide that genes and value so this h antigen is basic and yes even your o blood group will also have that so as i said this is extra gyan okay this is extra so if you want to take it you can if you don't want to take it leave it fine leave it so this is about the blood groups here so you should remember about this now the next is one more type of blood grouping that is your h rh antigen right that is your rh antigen so this rh means this rh means rhesus because it was discovered in that rhesus monkey you no know? so this is the rhesus antigen right i am not going to tell you the story so this is the rhesus antigen so bachcha it was discovered by karl landsteiner and wiener yeah it is it was discovered by karl landsteiner and wiener fine karl landsteiner and wiener he discovered this rh antigen so here in this rh antigen we are going to talk about the rh positive we are going to talk about the rh negative right this is what we are going to discuss let's say if blood contains rh factor or rh antigen then blood group will be rh positive then blood group is rh positive fine it is rh positive now if blood or if rh antigen absent blood group is rh negative like if i am saying my blood group is a b positive so basically on my rbc i have a antigen b antigen and moreover bachche even this rhesus antigen as well right like me i have three antigens then if i am saying my blood group is ab positive so i have a antigen i have b antigen plus i have this positive antigen as well are you getting it jyoti then what do i have i have this positive antigen as well means the rhesus antigen is also there clear bachche the rhesus antigen is also there is that clear yes understood tell me is it clear sure sure so that's what we have that's what we have now let's say if i am saying that my blood group is o negative okay o negative means no antigen at all right right i do not have a antigen i do not have b antigen i do not have rhesus antigen as well right i do not have rhesus antigen as well that's what you need to remember clear bachche so rh positive means that rhesus antigen present rh negative rhesus antigen absent so if let's say my blood group is o positive i have only one antigen that is your rhesus antigen forget about h antigen we do not mention it it is just something basic which is present on rbc surface or when it is rh negative o negative right no antigen is there now let's say right let's say bala that uh, you you were coming to your home and you saw that one person is injured right you took that person to the hospital okay now doctor is uh, doctor is like that blood transfusion is required but they do not have the test to check the blood group of that particular person right but blood transfusion is required on urgent basis so which blood group doctors are going to give to that person tell me which blood group doctors will give to that injured person quickly tell me yeah quick quick you have to be specific is it o positive or the o negative you have to be specific
ओके यू थिंक ओ पॉजिटिव मे आई नो द रीजन बच्चे सी ओ पॉजिटिव मीन्स राइट इफ इट इज ओ पॉजिटिव ओके इफ इट इज ओ पॉजिटिव मीन्स स्टिल द प्लस एंटीजन द रीजन एंटीजन इज देर ओके इट मीन्स स्टिल द रीजन एंटीजन इज देर ओके सो लेट से माइट बी दैट पर्सन इज हैविंग द ब्लड ग्रुप ओ नेगेटिव देन वॉट विल यू डू इट कैन कॉज द एग्लूटिनेशन इट कैन कॉज द क्लम्पिंग सो इन दैट केस वॉट इज सेफ टू गिव द ओ नेगेटिव ब्लड ग्रुप ओ नेगेटिव मीन्स नो एंटीजन एट ऑल fine no antigen at all so this is about the rhesus blood group so the perfect example to study about this rhesus blood group is bache uh, its incompatibility right one thing related to the incompatibility of that rhesus factor that is erythroblastosis fetalis so let's read it from ncrt and then i will tell you about the erythroblastosis fetalis so now focus here bache blood groups okay so you know that it differ in many aspects bache so we have abo blood grouping system as well and we have the reason blood grouping system as well and yes this is your homework you will tell me about the bombay phenotype right you are going to tell me about the bombay phenotype that's your homework right i want to see that answer in the comment section now come to this abo blood grouping it is based on the presence or absence of the surface antigens and antigens are what that are the chemicals that can induce immune response anti gen gen means to generate they are going to generate the immune response the antibody formation clear bache clear bache so this is what you need to remember that antigens are present on the rbc surface right this is what you need to remember that antigens are present on rbc surface they are present on rbc surface what the antigen clear bache the antigens is that clear sure is that clear right so abo blood grouping is based on the presence or absence of two surface antigens right bache a and b so similarly the plasma of different individuals clear bache it contains two natural antibodies i told you right so distribution of antigen and antibodies in the four groups right bache uh, right uh, that we will see and uh, you probably know that during blood transfusion any blood cannot be used the blood of a donor has to be carefully matched with the blood of the recipient so now here this table is important blood group is a antigen present is a antibody in plasma antibody so whenever you answer such questions make sure you check this part antigen is on rbc surface antibody is in the plasma okay antibody is in the plasma that's what you need to remember clear bache so now the next part is rh grouping so another antigen the rh antigen similar to one present in rhesus monkey this rh antigen it was discovered in rhesus monkey that story is also very interesting you can check that okay so it is also observed on the surface of rbcs of majority of the humans nearly 80% of the humans so such individuals are called yes such individuals are called rh positive if they have rh antigen if rh antigen is not there they are they, then they will be rh negative is that clear right then they will be rh negative is that clear yes then bache right so an rh negative person if exposed to rh positive blood the blood of rh negative person will form certain antibodies okay so if my blood group is rh negative and if i will get rh positive blood group my body will start forming the antibodies clear bache so that the best cases of erythroblastosis fetalis let's discuss that erythroblastosis fetalis erythroblastosis fetalis and uh, in your in your book na there is a very simple example of the erythroblastosis fetalis i still remember when i was studying this topic in depth right so in erythroblastosis fetalis also you know there are certain exceptions first of all understand what is it then i will tell you about that so see father is rh positive mother is rh negative okay so now when mother is conceiving right that baby is having the blood group rh positive blood group like let's say father is having a positive blood group mother is having let's say a negative blood group baby is also having the positive blood group right now baby is growing here in the mother's womb baby is growing here in the mother's womb during first pregnancy bachche the issue will not be severe during first pregnancy the issue will not be that like that like see 
you know that in the case of humans we have that placenta connection right right and the placenta is going to nourish the baby how with the help of that diffusion you cannot say that that directly maternal blood and the fetal blood is mixed no they have that intimate connection they have that very close connection okay they have that intimate connection they have that very close connection but that doesn't mean that they are you know totally mixed with each other are you getting my point that doesn't mean that they are totally mixed with each other that's what you need to keep in your mind first thing now during first pregnancy when there will be the childbirth at that time what is going to happen the during childbirth during parturition even the right the placental connection is there definitely uterus will start the vigorous contraction so ultimately what is going to happen that baby will come out from birth canal that baby will come out from blood birth canal right that baby will come out from the birth canal so ultimately during that time during childbirth at that time because some blood vessels will also rupture so mother's blood and the fetus blood and that baby's blood it will come in contact okay i'm repeating this again let's say this is the case of first pregnancy and mother is negative the baby is having positive blood group in the first pregnancy the issue is not that there okay placenta is having intimate connection but still the issue is not that severe during childbirth during parturition right there are chances that mother's blood and the baby's blood that can come in contact so from baby's blood some rbcs some you know rh positive containing antigen containing rbcs will enter in mother's circulation they will enter in mother's body they will enter in mother's circulation yes or no yes or no now because of that what will happen because of that what will happen now let's say if in my body there is some intruder okay if in my body i have the foreign molecules right i have that antigens in my body so obviously my body's immune system will get active it will start producing the antibodies against it so during that childbirth okay when when that rh plus rh plus blood group when it will enter in mother's circulation mother's body will start making antibodies against it means it will be there in the memory part that's how our immune system works in our immune system right in our specific immune system there is the property of the memory like if my body is getting exposed to a particular foreign particle right even in the less amount next time whenever that foreign particle will enter inside my body my body cells my body's antibodies are going to destroy it right they are going to kill it are you getting my point they are going to destroy it they are going to kill it are you getting it memory is there our immune system our specific immune system is so good it is having that memory okay it is having that memory so okay fine during first pregnancy this happened some rh positive cell they enters in mother circulation and mother's body has started forming the antibodies against it but now the issue is the second pregnancy right the issue is the second pregnancy see they are showing this rh positive baby's blood cells enter mother's blood stream invading rh positive blood cell cause the production of rh antibodies they cause the production of rh antibodies now months later mother has formed rh antibodies so if this lady will ever find rh positive blood group the antibodies are going to destroy that rh positive blood cells okay now during second pregnancy let's say again the issue is same again the baby is having rh positive blood group so now already in mother's body antibodies are there right they will immediately attack that baby's rbc they will immediately attack that fetus rbcs they will destroy it fine fine it will destroy it. the baby can have anemia and that baby can even die clear bachche that baby can even die clear bachche so that's why in such pregnancies after first pregnancy doctors they generally give you know they generally give injections to destroy these right anti rh antibodies right right they they give the injections to destroy rh antibodies so they will give something which can destroy that rh antibodies so that there will be no complication in the second pregnancy so this is the perfect example to understand the incompatibility of this of these rh blood groups and you used to call it as erythroblastosis fetalis erythroblastosis fetalis 
बच्चे ज्योति विल यू प्लीज टाइप योर क्वेश्चन अगेन इन अ नाइस वे ओके दिस इज आई दिस इज द बेस्ट एग्जाम्पल द इथ्रो ब्लास्टोसिस फीटालिस सो नाउ लेट मी डिस्कस इट फ्रॉम एन सी आर टी एंड द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक दैट वी हैव टू स्टार्ट इज योर ओके दैट इज योर ब्लड ग्रुप नाउ सी सो आर एच ग्रुप शुड ऑलवेज बी मैच बिफोर ट्रांसफ्यूजन ओके आर एच ग्रुप शुड ऑलवेज बी मैच बिफोर यस बिफोर ट्रांसफ्यूजन ओके नाम बच्चे right so a special case of rh incompatibility that is mismatching has been observed between rh negative blood of a pregnant mother with rh positive blood of the fetus so here you guys can see rh antigens of the fetus do not get exposed to the rh negative blood rh antigen of the fetus because they are positive they do not get exposed to the rh negative blood of mother in first pregnancy as the two bloods are well separated by placenta but during the delivery of the first child bachche there is the possibility of exposure of maternal blood to small amounts of rh positive blood from the fetus so in such cases the mother starts preparing antibodies against rh antigen in case of her subsequent pregnancies bachche the rh antibodies from mother can leak into the blood of the fetus and they can destroy fetal rbcs so that's what you need to study after the class so ma'am during the second pregnancy can destruction of fetal rbc occur during the carrying of the baby or only when the baby is about to be born no bachche jyoti it can be there when baby is there in the mother's womb right it can happen then because placenta is there close intimate connection is there so obviously that antibodies will diffuse into that baby's body as well fine okay so next topic is the blood coagulation that is the clotting of blood right so that's what we have to study so if there is any doubt related to the topic that we have covered so far do let me know yep do let me know quick do let me know bachche blood flow will get mixed na and during placental connections also right during second pregnancy lakshmi right during placental connection also this thing will happen so it is the coagulation of blood right coagulation of blood which is also known as clotting of blood fine coagulation of blood which is also known as clotting of blood a very important phenomena like let's say whenever there is the bleeding the bleeding time is near about 1 to 2 minutes and the clotting time can vary it can be 2 to 6 minutes right like uh, when i yeah in our graduation right it used to be an experiment to check the clotting time okay to check the clotting time so when you talk about the bleeding time as i said bleeding time is near about 1 to 3 minutes and the clotting time is near about 2 to 6 minutes like my clotting time was near about 6 minutes yep right that after 6 um, uh, like after 5 minutes my blood will start clotting so till then obviously blood flow will be there and you know that blood clotting is something very amazing this is something very important let's say if a person is having the having an injury right let's say a person is having an injury so injury means obviously the blood will also come out right this is also the case because here you know what is going to happen see this is a kind of skin layer okay this is a layer here skin layer here so what is going to happen the proteins here they will get exposed right and especially particularly we'll be talking about the collagen you know about the collagen right collagen the most abundant protein of the animal world what is collagen bachcha it is the most abundant protein right it is the most abundant protein of the animal world so this uh, collagen will get exposed so basically there is an injury so at the time of injury what should be there obviously initially bleeding will be there but we have to stop that otherwise because of minor injuries excessive blood loss will be there and person can lose its life as well okay the case of hemophilia the bleeders are diseases 
right the hemophilia which is also known as royal's disease which is also known as bleeder's disease so in hemophilia right obviously males are affected with hemophilia females females are just the carriers of hemophilia right they can just pass that hemophilia right they can just pass that uh, that uh, defective x chromosome to her son and the daughter but 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 females we are not going to get affected with hemophilia that's a blessing we have two x chromosomes now so that's a blessing to us fine so males are going to get affected with the hemophilia bleeder's disease so now what is happening when there is an injury blood flow should stop that is basically the clotting but how that clot will form this is what we have to study so when you talk about the blood clotting or the coagulation actually which it's a cascade right it's not a single step process it's a multiple step process it's a cascade okay it's a sick it's a kind of cascade one after another one after another one after another the right the reactions will go on and then finally the clot will form fine then finally the clot will form clear bachi clear bachi so the uh, normally now in our body right now in our body let's say my chin to is healthy healthy okay so our chin to is healthy healthy right so when in the chintu's body obviously blood vessels are there right so here in these blood vessels the blood flow should be the blood flow should be very normal it should not be restricted okay the blood flow should be normal it should not be restricted so in our intact blood vessels right the intact blood vessels means the blood vessels which are not injured where your collagen protein is not exposed so here here we don't want that clots right we don't want that clots so that's why in our body we have the natural anti blood coagulant heparin that's why in our body what do we have we have the natural anti blood coagulant that is heparin so heparin will not allow the blood to get coagulated in intact blood vessel right it will not allow the blood to get coagulated in intact blood vessel and by chance bachche if there is the clotting of blood in intact blood vessel that blood clot is known as thrombus right that blood clot is known as thrombus and this disease is known as thrombosis what is thrombosis what is thrombosis thrombosis is the right formation of blood clot in the intact blood vessels and of course it is dangerous of course it is dangerous now when there is an injury when there is an injury at that time right don't you think at this site where right at this site don't you think when there is an injury don't you think that at this particular site okay at this particular site the blood flow needs to stop so here don't you think that heparin needs to become inactive heparin should be inactive here right heparin should be inactive here of course yes of course yes right and moreover you know that platelets are going to play the role platelets are going to play the role in the blood clotting so they should also come here right they should also come here so here in blood clotting mechanism in this cascade we'll be talking about the different different proteins we also call them as blood clotting factors fine we also call them as blood clotting factors so we name them in romans basically 1 2 3 4 like this but in that detail we will not study we will only talk about your prothrombin thromboblastin fibrinogen fibrin that's what we have to discuss clear bachche that's what we have to discuss now come to this part now see when the tissue is injured injured tissue will release certain factors right and that a is nothing it is also the thromboblastin right that a is also nothing it is also the thromboblastin so here even the blood flow will be there blood flow will be there to the injured site here also the blood platelet blood platelets they will also disintegrate they will also release the thromboblastin so what will be released initially bachche what will be released initially the thromboplastin yes what will be released initially the thromboplastin clear bachche clear 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 so both these thromboplastins they are going to react see they need the calcium ion so calcium ion is very important for the blood clotting clear bachche clear bachche calcium ion is very important for the it is very important for the blood clotting here the things are missing okay we have to put it so a is what here a is also the thromboplastin 
is what it is also the thromboplastin so both your injured tissue also release thromboplastin your blood platelets here also blood platelets will go there to the injured side they will get disintegrate they will also release thromboplastin now this thromboplastin right in the presence of calcium it is going to react with your plasma protein it is going to react with your plasma protein and this it will form this b this b is nothing it is the thrombo thrombokinase this b is nothing but it is the this b is nothing but it is the thrombokinase what is it it is the thrombokinase and it is also known as bache prothrombinase fine it is also known as pro thrombinase clear bache it is thrombokinase and it is also known as prothrombinase is that clear so now this thrombokinase and prothrombinase see in the blood we also have prothrombin it is also inactive right it is also inactive and yes let me tell you along with thromboplastin here anti heparin right the serotonin will also be released here we are saying na the thromboplastin is released along with that serotonin will also be released serotonin is the blood constrictor blood vessel constrictor that will constrict blood vessel so that blood flow will be released okay so it is not just the thromboplastin that will be released serotonin will also be released right that serotonin is the blood vessel constrictor first thing and yes the chemicals which can inactivate the heparin they will also be released fine they will also be released clear bachche clear bachche so now when this enzyme thrombokinase also known as prothrombinase this enzyme will act on inactive protein i told you this inactive protein is synthesized by liver this inactive protein it is synthesized by liver and it is also it is also present in the plasma so in the presence of this enzyme this prothrombin will be activated and it will form thrombin right prothrombin will form thrombin is that clear and this thrombin it catalyzes the conversion of right it will convert the inactive fibrinogen to the active fibrinogen okay so a is thromboplastin b is thrombokinase 3 is c is thrombin d is the fibrinogen here d is the fibrinogen here clear so fibrinogen again it is also synthesized by liver it is inactive right it is soluble protein it is inactive protein so thrombin will activate it of course you need the calcium ions for it and finally we will get the fibrin so fibrin threads they are insoluble threads right they will polymerize and they will form they will trap some blood cells they are going to form that clog they are going to form that clot clear bachche they are going to form that clot they are going to form that clot so have a look here have a look here so see damaged blood vessel right it will release clotting factors so clotting factor here the first clotting factor you know that it will be your thromboplastin and that thromboplastin will form your enzyme thrombokinase that thrombokinase will do what it will activate your prothrombin to thrombin and that will activate your fibrinogen to fibrin so fibrinogen is soluble fibrinogen fibrin is insoluble so fibrin strands they will trap blood cell they will form the clot they will form the clot got it got it bachche right so this is the blood clotting this is the blood clotting so you should know about these reactions it is important so fibrin right the network of fibrin plus the damaged right dead damaged elements of blood when they are trapped they are forming that clot they are forming that scar clear bachche so in totality there are total 13 clotting factors do you know that so imagine still you are not discussing it in detail and in depth in ncert it is not given okay so 13 clotting factors are there okay 13 clotting factors are there and bachche yes your vitamin k right your vitamin k is very important for synthesis of clotting factor right your vitamin k is very important for the synthesis of clotting factor no vitamin k obviously blood clotting will be affected and even calcium ions are required fine calcium ions are required yes bachche so it's me anji so bachche if she is the best teacher then why are you spamming here if she is the best teacher why are you spamming here indeed she is one of the best teachers right but you are spamming here it means you know 
you are just defaming her so chill no need to spam kindly focus here so injured tissue release thromboplast in blood platelets they also release this and that so i hope this process is clear to you it is one of the most important topics clear bache it is one of the most important topics so let's revise it from ncrt and then we'll start the next chapter sorry next topic clear so when you cut your finger or hurt yourself your wound doesn't continue to bleed for a long time it will stop so bleeding time 1 to 3 minute clotting time 2 to 6 months vitamin k is required calcium ions are required and you should know about these factors at least you should know about the thromboplastin prothrombokinase thrombin and the fibrin so fibrin is active fibrin is active right bache fibrin is active your thrombin is active prothrombin inactive form your fibrinogen is also an inactive form okay okay so see this is what written here so that that will be your homework you read it you revise it fine you read it you revise it clear bache done oh oh bache do not pay attention on this spamming chill chill do not pay attention oh you are rude no not yet bache i didn't start yet chill okay so that's what you have to remember so that's it bache this uh, rest we will discuss in the next part right we let's divide this chapter into two parts or uh, you know that in the morning session we are also discussing your uh, evolution so we need two more classes to finish that chapter and uh, that we will discuss on tuesday and i am going to post one more video for you that is very important for you uh, do subscribe our channel if you are new to our channel bache so that video will help you to understand right the, to understand to they, that video will help you to start your biology preparation okay that's what i can say and moreover again i'm telling you right focus on this part the unlock 20 so if you want to join any of the course right any of the course on the an academy platform till october 14 you will get additional 20% discount here you guys can see for the plus the price will be near about 27199 okay so and for for 2024 and for 2025 it will be near about 39000 initially it was 49000 fam okay okay so you have to use the coupon code ambika10 and you will get that additional off so you have to apply the coupon code then only you will get that stuff off done so take care bye bye i'll share the pdf in the telegram group right so just keep studying properly and please utilize your time and theory is important you know that and pyq practice is also important but do not just focus on the pyq practice you have to read the theory you have to revise the theory and then go for the pyq practice that's what you have to do clear bache so body fluid so i'll share the pdf after the class in the telegram group so now you know what you have to do you just need to let me know in the comment section that you like the session or not okay but you like the session or not and you have to share your feedback with me and yes you have to tell me about the homework as well so see you all soon take care bye bye tara